Hi! Welcome to Far Cry 4. We're doing the mission Payback, which is up in the Sherpa camp in the northern part of Kairat. It's amazing they can fit so much into a tent. Ajay, you're just in time. Pagan's broadcast is starting. What's this about? No clue, brother. But we're going to find out. Good people of Kirat. I'm sure you will all be delighted to know that the reports of my death are completely and utterly inaccurate. I am alive, and all is right in the world. The life brings change. And I implore you, Kirat, to look to my example and see it as the positive influence it is. Change requires strength. And it is a strength that I know all of you possess. Now, I recently experienced change within my own organization. Miss Knorr and Paul Deplore, after years of dedicated service, have decided to move on. I'm sure you will all join me in wishing them well in their future endeavors. But like them, we must look forward, not back. The attempt on my life is nothing more than a symptom of resistance to change. Rest easy. For Yuma Lao, my trusted commander-in-chief, who oversees our mining operations at the KEO facility, stands between me and any would-be assassin. She would rather die than see any harm come to me. Go ahead, I challenge you. Put her resolve to the test. To summarize, change is good. Embrace it. Your king is alive. Rejoice. And Yuma stands like a sentinel, waiting. Bring it on. Sounds like he's calling us out. The mines. You know what to do. I'll be completely honest, at that point I wasn't exactly sure what to do. <laughs> um, I mean, presumably kill Yuma, right? Slash Pagan. Slash Yuma. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, here are the mines. <laughs> I've spent a lot of my life apologizing for Yuma's first impression. She has a remarkable ability to make consistently terrible introductions. I'd love for you two to meet on better terms. She really has been the driving force behind most of my successes. She forges deals with my international buyers. She uh, polices Noor and Deplur. She even finds time to run my army. Well, that is until her recent obsession with Kirati superstition took a hold of her. She thinks I don't know about the expeditions she's been sending up the mountains looking for magical paintings or whatever it is. I'm as open as the next fellow about negligible losses for the sake of employee morale, but only so many pens can go missing. It's a shame that that message stopped so abruptly. I enjoy Pagan. Um, and uh, as a buzzer in the tree, good times all round. Anyway, we are at the mine now. Very exciting. The brightness on this is not so good, right? I think we're going to bump it up. Mm, all right, there we go. Brightness up a little. Now there's lots of notes uh, kicking around here. Durgish security protocols follow up. This one's going to come back to us later. There may be more, but I missed them. You'll understand that a little bit later. There's one up here, I think, from the English chap who we found a note from in a previous mission. A tea-drinking fellow. I think he was referenced, perhaps. I think this is from him. Yeah, Sir Nigel. Kyrat is no more than a memory. Run, run like hell. Oh, maybe he was the translator. Uh, lots of people have died. The morale is low. Altitude sickness, frostbites. He's concerned and wants to stop the project. And then through here, our 
object of defined Yuma comes to a close. I keep thinking those little white flashing things are things to pick up. Those ones are, there's some arrows I think, but it's the rats there that are glowing. A little bit of money over here. Hmm. <laughs> really not very much. Maybe 3,000. And a little note. Uh, that is her talking about the translator, and he died. He was bleeding out when he arrived. Demons have invaded Shangri-La. Well, if we've been doing the Shangri-La missions, if you've seen those, you'll know all about those. <coughs> Hello, human. Before your horrible mother came along, he was fearless. Nobody could stand up to him. Then your mother. Your mother. So she's, um, crazy and older than we expected. Or at least older than I expected. Um, because she knows our parents. Uh, if you read the capital, the words in capitals here, you'll see that it says the truth that, uh, the truth is that Kyrat was always going to change you. That's why we never discussed home, Mom. And at the change, it's changed from security protocols follow up to Dear AJ. And then there's some weird stuff going on here with a meter. Uh, I guess you're having visions. And it's curious, I wonder if um, it'll be Sabal that we see if I've done the majority of his missions, which I'll find out on the next playthrough, presumably. Although, some Borderlands DLC is out on the 16th, so two or three days' time. Um, I'm likely to go have a look at that before doing my second playthrough. But I want to get the rest of these up by then. I want you to go into every room and find every child. Every child. Bring them back here to me. And um, walking through a river of blood, not the most pleasant thing. It seems Amita is uh, a lot darker than we thought, although she could have been looking for the... Um... She weakened his resolve. She turned him into this simpering cell of a man. He stopped being a king that day. He was broken. Weak. Yeah, sorry, uh, Badra. Um, the Hotuna Matata, you know, the, the thing she's being ascended into. Or at least Sabal wants to. And also Yuma. Um, clearly knew our parents well. Didn't just know them a bit, but actually saw what happened in their relationship developing. Also here really annoyed me. There's a moon reflected in the water, but there's no moon in the sky. I know it's a little thing, but it's details. Anyway, here's some more Amita. Pretty brutal. If you love Kairat, you will turn around and go into your homes, or I'll have to shoot you. For some reason, the subtitles got stuck there. Anyway. Moving on, up the River of Blood. <laughs> uh, there's a great, and foolishly I didn't look up, uh, but you'll see here there's a grapple point, which makes life nice and easy. And here's Yuma. So that's definitely, definitely not weird. Uh, she seemed to turn into Kalanag. Uh, we've got to destroy the gate. Turns out there are some pots there that I can't quite make out from this distance. There's also some archers, uh, like hunters. You'll see one just down there to the left. And these are the pots which you can blow up. Well, although I failed quite miserably there. I'm rubbish with the bow. Kind of rubbish with everything. I don't know why that one didn't hit. That was a clear shot uh, there, but you can explode them. Uh, you get experience for these guys. Ten experience is the same as regular hunters. Uh, obviously more for a headshot. There doesn't appear to be the ability to take them down. Well, I may have missed that, I guess. You get a chance to take down, well, you'll see Kalanag. But you have to take him down three times, as far as I'm aware. I think it checkpoints after each one, and I'll keep an eye out for that while I'm watching the replay. Uh, the exploding things will catch archers if they're nearby. Um, but yeah, it's not too difficult. You don't have any health potions, but you can do a regular heal. You don't have a health bar, but presumably it's healing two health points, and your health is matching whatever you had before, so I guess four or maybe five bars. I think five, right? So we've got dominant strength now. 
It's funny how I forget I could just slide back, but now I'm in the flow. Now I didn't... I forget if I checked to see if I had a scope here. Um, but I'm not sure if it would help. Because these guys are hunters and presumably they obey the laws of other, the same rules as other hunters out in the wild, which is that you tag them but then their tag disappears after a few seconds, which I quite like as a concept. Um, they could maybe tie it in, have that like in regular play as well for like all enemies, and you have to get a takedown or something to extend it, forcing you to activate it then carry on. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think I've got about five health each wrap. Uh, I guess restores two health because I've got that skill too. Uh, the screen goes grey, I think, a couple of times, so it gives you fairly due warning. So it'll start red and then change back to this kind of more realistic, more realistic, more natural blue. But when the um, screen is tinged with red, you need to heal, and if it goes all black or at least colourless, you're really in trouble. So I think this room is clear now. Uh, time to shoot the pots and blow the gate open. Presumably, I presumably I could have done that from the start, um, but didn't. There's a grapple point here, a little bit of climbing to do to get to the next area. I lied to myself. I thought he would get better. He had to get better. But no. <laughs> what is broken stays broken. It stays weak. But Pagan will not break me. This country will not break me, and you, you will not break me! So I guess she's old enough to have had a thing for Dad, right? That's... dark. Um, now a brief swinging section. After a climb, I think we'll see. Up here and then, yeah, multiple grapples. Just swinging around. I kind of wanted to get a Tarzan rhythm going, but it didn't really work out, unfortunately. And then I got a bit confused as to where I was supposed to be going. But it's around the corner here. And yeah, a good old swing off that one. And uh, then not so good off here, but fortunately the exit is pretty clearly signposted. And again, the moon reflecting in the water, which... Mm, mm, I'll try not to dwell on it. Figured I'd better heal after that drop as well. Anyway, enough with the Blood River, and into a cave. I guess we never found out what the source was. Of the river. <laughs> and here is Yuma for another round of weird. You got me. What the hell? Let's stop playing this game. Shogwa. We both know what you really want. No toys in bed. Pagan would never do himself. Time to kill you and mix your mother's ass in pink love. <laughs> mm. Wow, she really does not like mum, right? Oh, so I guess she was in love with her dad. Sees us as a reminder of his betrayal. I don't know. I mean, we don't know if they were involved. We don't know the exact details, but certainly she feels. Cheated? Whether or not there was actual cheating involved, who knows. But, um, as Willis made clear, our dad, Mohan, was definitely part of Pagan's kind of core team before he ran off with Mum, right? So who knows what happened. Now this all gets a bit confusing. Um, she's turned into Kalanag, or at least we're having to fight Kalanag. 
As I mentioned earlier, although I didn't realise that, sorry, I was jumping ahead when we were fighting those archers before Kalanag wasn't yet there. He is now. Uh, we're going to have to defeat him three times. It'll save a checkpoint after each fight, which is good news. And when you hit him with an arrow, you then move him for a takedown. But each stage he gets increasing numbers of defences. So he starts off with him, I think, just on his own. Then he'll get the tiger and some archers, and then you're going to get the tiger and a lot of archers. You've got the slowdown bow from Shangri-La, if you've been back there, to get the second bell. Not a big fan, if I'm honest, but there's the first takedown. Relatively easy, that one. It gets a bit harder from here on in. There's the tiger spawning in on the right, and hunters as well. The tiger only takes one hit, which is thankful. If he took more, I would have died many, many times. And there are the archers again. They just take one hit anywhere that you want. Obviously, you're going to get more experience for a headshot. And they're double experience of regular archers. But the arrows are coming in thick and fast. I don't know what to recommend you here. Um other than persistence. I made it to his second evolution. You'll see there he disappears, and I'm convinced he spawns behind, but actually he might just teleport. You'll see me looking back a lot. And the tiger after you kill him, just like in Shangri-La, will come back after a fixed amount of time, so basically he'll constantly respawn, so he's always a thorn in your side. I actually find firing with the bow a little bit easier from the hip. The slowing down of time doesn't really help me considerably. And you'll see Kalanag's got multiple projectiles. He can fire bows, uh, but he's also got this flaming bowler. I presume it's a bowler. A bowler is um, three weights tied together by a string which you chuck at things that are running away and it gets wrapped around their legs and trips them up. Typically animals, but also works really well against humans. I'm not speaking from personal experience, I should add. Anyway, he's around here and you'll see I keep looking back up towards the original area here where the tiger comes in. And I think what I was seeing was the tiger spawn in, and I was confusing it for Kalanag. There he is, swinging his fiery stick. And that was a miss, and you may see he's done it a couple of times already, but when you get close he will disappear, and just disappear in a red uh, plume of smoke. Here he is, here. And then perform a takedown. So that's the second takedown there. So now to the third and final of probably won't be the final, will it? No. Uh, shame myself. Anyway, the tiger ended up practically killing me there, so I lost one life. Here is the second attempt. There are some, you can see the archers spawning in there on the left and right. I was trying to get that. I can't believe how badly I missed that, but I was trying to get the, um, that for a, uh, the pot for an explosive splash kill. And you can see here it's gone black and white. That is not good. You need to hide and heal at that point. I'm doing it a couple of times just so I've got a bit of health in the bank. It doesn't seem to limit the number of times you can heal, so I'm not sure how useful it is. But you see here, time slowed down, and it doesn't... I don't want to ramp too much, but it doesn't... It just slows everything down, right? It doesn't give you better reaction times. It's not like you can turn faster while you're slowed or outperform other people. So the whole concept of slowing time down, it just doesn't strike me as particularly useful. Yeah, it's not really much I can say about that. Anyway, there is a uh, hunter there. And um, the old gold is the tiger. I'm trying to heal through him, mauling me. Oh, but I sped up the heal there, it didn't seem pertinent to me. You watch that. And you'll see there are two guys there. You've got Kalanag there on the left and the archer on the right. And I just managed to clip Kalanag. I didn't even realize it was him when I was going for him. You sure he's dead, RJ? I don't know if you got him enough. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for a quick time event, like um, killing whatever his name was with the beard in the previous one. Um, no, was it him? No, it was the head guy where you put multiple knives in him. Create like a cross. That was cool. Um, I really enjoyed the fact that you could fail but still kill him and then there were about three or four different versions. Maybe I'll link that in the description if I remember. If I don't and it's not in the description, please uh, remind me in the comments. Anyway, there's going to be a... Um, Amita's going to call in now that you realised that Yuma is dead and she was Kalanag all along and you were just tripping your nuts off. So I will see you on the other side.
Oh, and I love that it's only 30 XP for a takedown of, like, Yuma, the main boss. Second main boss. Anyway. Amira. Yuma's dead. Oh, you killed the demon of Durgesh. Don't worry, Ajay. Bacon is next. So I guess that means we're coming properly towards the end of the story missions. You'll also see the unyielding strength skill um, has been unlocked, which will give us, there we go, six health. Um, it's four, though, and I'm one short at the moment. It's also weakened Yuma's fortress, so I'm going to go off and do that shortly as well. Anyway, that, my friends, is that. The end of the payback. On the left, what you do next adventure? Um, on the left is bell tower number 12, on the right bell tower number 13. If I've got those numbers wrong, mouse over the middle, I'll tell you. Uh, but I'm liking the bell towers in northern Kyra. They're proving much more of a challenge, even if it's just about chests um, and sneaky hiding of them. Anyway, I will see you in the next video, my lovely little survive.